Hi everyone, uh, my name is Paul Harding. I'm a professor at Stony Brook University in the program of creative writing and literature, and I write novels. Uh, and I'm here to talk with you a little bit today about novels and novel writing. Um, I'd say the definition for what a novel is is pretty fuzzy. Uh, there's a lot of um, wiggle room in what's considered a novel. Basically, um, the definition has to do with a prose narrative um, that is fiction um, that is um, of a certain length. Um, basically, a novel just means a long narrative, fictional narrative. Um, so you have the short story, and then at a certain point, a short story becomes long enough, they call it a novella, and then a novella becomes long enough, and they call it a novel, and there you go. So once you get over maybe 150 pages or something, that's considered a novel. So it's a, it's a long fictional narrative. And so you know that fiction just means it's, um, it's writing that is not factual, it's imagined. Um, it's true, it's not that it's lying, it's just that it is made up in your, in your mind. Um, as you know, often fiction is uh, about real people, real places, real events, just they're just imagined versions of those things. So, and then that you know that the word narrative is just a fancy word for um, telling a story. So a novel is just a long, long, long story. Um, sometimes my students get a little uh, nervous uh, when they think about how, um, how scary it can be uh, at the prospect of writing a novel that's that long. They think, oh my gosh, it's so scary to think about writing that much. Um, it's, it's hard to think at the beginning of how am I going to get a 300 page, how am I going to write 300 pages? I can't even write five page you know, essays for school. But one thing I tell my students all the time is that like a poet, like a short story writer, like an essay writer, you only write one sentence at a time. You actually only write one word at a time, you know? Um, and so as a novel writer, what you do is you just write more sentences, but you still write them one at a time. Um, and with a novel, you just have to have that kind of mentality of um, it's going to take a long time and you like the idea that it's going to take a long time to write the novel. Um, one of the things that I love about writing novels, half the fun for me for writing a novel is, 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 going, is looking for the novel, searching for it, exploring, um, just doing tons and tons of writing and trying to discover the characters and the places and the plots that I'm going to write about. It's kind of a little bit like treasure hunting. And I do all sorts of things. I keep little, I keep notebooks where I write down cool little quotes that I find in other books, or if I overhear people, you know, bits of conversation that sound cool to me, I keep a record of that in, in, in notebooks that I've been keeping for decades now. Um, I also go through the dictionary and I find, I make word lists. I have these decks of index cards on which I put a single word. Um, most of them are uh, 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 words that are, come from Old English. We speak modern English. Um, words that come from Old English tend to be very, very concrete and very, very um, literal. So you can see them, you can hear them. Um, they're very, very, very vivid words like blood and hay and rock and stone and wood, stuff like that. So what I do is I take these I have hundreds of them. I shuffle them and then I deal the cards out one after another and I see if I can write my way from word to word to word and see if that can generate something interesting. So for example here, let's see, we have the word roof, right? The word midnight, the word wind, and the word hill. So if I were to deal those out, I would try to make a sentence that had to do with you know, uh, I, you know, somebody being on the roof, um, on the house at the top of the hill at midnight in the wind, you know, um, the version of the sentence, she, she found herself on the roof of the house on the top of the hill at midnight in the wind, you know, and there it is, you see, very literal, very concrete, nothing abstract or conceptual, it's just there's something interesting, and then to me, that's already, that would be a great first sentence for a novel. And then from there, I would just already think, what would the second sentence be of that story? 
Um, and then the second sentence would be just as lit, you know, roof, hill, wind, midnight, you know, just very, very concrete. And I just go from there and I just keep trying to generate ideas just, and, and stuff that I, that interests me that I think is cool. You know, I also love to go through old photographs. Um, like for example, here's a, I have these old family photographs. This is actually a daguerreotype. It's printed on tin. Um, that's my great great grandmother she looks like she was a barrel full of laughs doesn't she you know um and then actually this is her daughter my great grandmother and so i'd look at a photograph like that and i'd say who who is this what's the situation she's in um and you can write anything you want you get anything from very very tragic you know like oh it's dawn and she is sad because she's watching the you know the embers of her house that she just spent the night watching her house burn down you know or it could be something as silly as oh you know emma was being a drama queen again and she made us take pictures of her looking like a tragic shakespearean actor out in the fields because we've got nothing to do up in maine <laughs> that's where they used to that's where they lived up in maine so you see, you can just take these different kinds of things and prompts and just any of these things can lead you into these other worlds and um, can prompt your imagination, you know? Um, so I would just say um, one of the things that I would recommend is when you're thinking about, if you're thinking, oh, I've got a big story to tell, it's gonna take a long time, it's gonna take a lot of pages, it's going to take a long time for me to write. It's going to take a long you know, time for the reader to read. Um, just rem you remember that um, readers love to have their time taken up with long books. Um, and so one of the things that you should be thinking about, too, is that you should make, um, make yourself um, um, think a lot about places and people that you will love um, being with and thinking about for a year, for two years, for three years, you know? Because um, it takes time to get to know these people in these places um, in order to describe them and their experiences um, as well as you'd like to. Um, I would say, basically, if I was gonna boil down, you know, my idea about writing, um, you know, to one golden rule, it's your job as the, the writer, as the novelist, is to tell your reader what it was like, you know? What was it like for that woman or that girl or that boy who was on the roof of the house on the top of the hill at midnight in the wind? What did it smell like, taste like, feel like, etc.? cetera, to always appeal to the, the physical senses because what you want to do is take your reader and transport them into the actual experience itself. You know, and if you can do that over a period of all those pages of a, you know, the long pages of a novel, then you'll, um, you'll have made a wonderful work of art. Um, so I hope that, um, that gives you some food for thought. Um, I wish you the best of health. I'm sorry that you're sick and I'm sorry that you're in the hospital and I hope you get well and get to go home very, very soon. Okay. All the best.